Hey there, it's David Mason. Some of you know me from working in the TV series, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. And tonight, I'm going to be conducting an experiment in radio astronomy. And that is the measurement of the 1.42 gigahertz frequency that is transmitted by our own Milky Way galaxy. And this frequency is the result of hydrogen atoms separating from protons and when this happens, it gives an emission of 1.42 gigahertz, actually 1.420457 gigahertz precisely. And we can measure the Doppler shift of this frequency and calculate how fast stars are moving towards the Earth and away from the Earth within our own Milky Way galaxy. And these stars are up to 100,000 light years distance from Earth, and we can measure that in the Doppler shift of that frequency and see this on a spectrum analyzer, which is a really interesting experiment to conduct. So what I have here is an antenna that I built, um, and then I've got my test and measurement equipment that I use in my own uh, laboratory, and uh, we're gonna look at this frequency as it's acquired on this equipment. So it should be a fun experiment. So here's the antenna that I built. Um, it's all made of copper from copper circuit board material. This is material that I had handy because I design and build equipment and have to print my own circuit boards. But since I had excess, I cut it on a bandsaw and I went to the Home Depot and bought some supplies, bought some rails and hardware, and I built this thing. And then the uh, waveguide coupling is a WR650 specified. I still made it from plexiglass and, and copper but this is what um, couples the signal efficiently. This antenna is specified, I, I wanted to have peak performance at 1.4 gigahertz, which I did the calculations for. And this antenna has a coverage of 1.1 to 1.9 gigahertz. And uh, it has an SWR of 1.104 at 1.42 gigahertz, which is remarkably perfect. And then, this is now connected to a low noise amplifier. Now this low noise amplifier, um, I'm always having to do things to improve things. So I put a tantalum capacitor to decouple the power going to it. And inside this low noise amplifier is I, I put a T network of trimmer capacitors to step up the impedance to lower uh, the signal to noise ratio or to improve it. And I got about a one and a half dB of improvement of that signal to noise. Then this is coupled to a um, high performance uh, SMA cable, which then goes to a low noise, or it's actually a bandpass filter. This is a 1.4 gigahertz bandpass filter, then a low noise amplifier. So I have about 50 dB of gain so far. And because of this high gain, I have the signal going to a limiter, which prevents overpowering the harmonic mixers of a spectrum analyzer. You don't want to blow the mixer diodes because that'll cost you a fortune. Then this goes to a um, power uh, divider, and then this is um, also impedance protected, so I can split the uh, coax to each spectrum analyzer so I can independently measure. I have about 50 dB of gain, so there's a lot of gain, and this gives me some room to do some power splitting and limiting. And I'm using two spectrum analyzers and an oscilloscope to monitor, and I'm gonna talk a bit about the spectrum analyzer. So this is the Tektronix 2782. This spectrum analyzer covers between 100 hertz to 33 gigahertz coaxial and up to 325 gigahertz using harmonic mixers. This spectrum analyzer, although it's not in production today, uh, when it had its mixer set, it was 85,000. And if you wanna find an equivalent replacement, you're spending about 150 to 250,000 to find something with the equal uh, performance. Um, and this is a spectrum analyzer that I'm very familiar with. Uh, I was friends with Dr. Larry Lockwood, who was head of engineering at Tektronix in the spectrum analyzer division. And Larry and I were friends, and he confided to me that there was a problem in the noise floor of this uh, design of the spectrum analyzer. And uh, I was able to research this in my own uh, calibration lab, and I found that the noise perturbation was at 22.3 gigahertz and I knocked it down by tuning, uh, well, taking out a bolt of the second LO oscillator and that was able to reduce that signal to a, an acceptable level to keep it in tolerance. So it's a very high performance spectrum analyzer. It, it's a purely analog 
type uh, where it'll go down to 2 hertz resolution bandwidth at the 3 dB point. And then so the other spectrum, analy as a spectrum analyzer is the uh, Agilent um, Keysight 8563EC. This covers between 30 hertz to 26.5 gigahertz and uh, it'll go to 325 gigahertz. This spectrum analyzer uh, is very expensive. It's, it's out of production. Um, you, if you were to try to replace it with uh, an equivalent, uh, you would be spending 150 to 250,000. And this one with the mixer set was also 85,000 uh, when it was in production. And I have that spectrum analyzer connected to a um, display so we can see a larger display of the signal that we're going to be acquiring for the 1.42 gigahertz. And then this is a Tektronix MDO 34 um, high performance oscilloscope and I'm using that oscilloscope to monitor the um, the analog signal coming out of the demodulated signal from the Tektronix 2782. So we have a lot of expensive equipment here. That, that oscilloscope, its current production, it's eight, uh, 18,000 and we really don't need to have all of this expensive equipment. This is, just happens to be what I use in my test lab. But you can do this experiment of measuring the 1.42 gigahertz using an SDR system for probably about $1,000 or $2,000, uh, a much more affordable rate than what I've spent here. But it's just what I own and what I use, so this is what I'm using. And it's a little bit unique because uh, most are using SDRs, and I'm demonstrating that you can measure this frequency Doppler shift from our Milky Way galaxy using swept IF spectrum analyzers. And uh, so the system I have is extremely sensitive. When I set these spectrum analyzers down to their lowest resolution bandwidth, I can measure a signal down to minus 174 dBm, which is very, very low level. And this is what's unique about these uh, swept IF spectrum analyzers, the uh, extreme sensitivity. And they're also used as laboratory standards, metrology standards, and engineering standards. And uh, I'm glad that I get to have these kinds of uh, spectrum analyzers to do the work that I need to do. So I'm going to wait till the Milky Way comes up in the sky. We're already picking up some of it. And it's just a little bit of a perturbation here, but we're going to see some signals acquired a little bit later tonight when the Milky Way is visible. And I will aim that antenna at the Milky Way and we'll be able to see the 1.42 gigahertz frequency. So we are getting the signal of the 1.42 uh, gigahertz frequency from our own Milky Way galaxy. So I have the center frequency set to 1.420457 gigahertz. And so that's the center of the screen, but you can see, I'm gonna move the cursor from the center. This is center, so if the, all frequencies were stable and there was no motion or a galaxy or motion of the Earth, we would see a spike at that exact center frequency. But because the galaxy is rotating, the Earth is rotating around the sun, we have Doppler shift of the frequency. And then what we are seeing is the offset frequency from the 1.42 gigahertz because of the rotation. We're seeing the Doppler shift of the frequency. And this is really interesting because then I can do a calculation to come up with how fast that portion of the galaxy is moving. And because it's a higher frequency, it means it's groups of stars moving towards us. And because they're all moving kind of relatively the same, it's not a perfect spike. We have uh, kind of a shift where it's a mountain rather than a spike because it's, it's a um, Doppler shifted where they're all kind of approximately at that frequency and not exactly. So this is why we're seeing these bumps. And it's starting to get more apparent. It, uh, it's getting higher on the horizon. We're looking in the region of the Cygnus um, constellation. Which has a great um, amount of the uh, Milky Way galaxy. And it happens to be my favorite uh, constellation because it's, um, it's got the X-ray source that's very famous, uh, the X1, Cygnus X1, and it's, um, it's also a black hole. And uh, there's a Rush song uh, 
by the Canadian band Rush called Cygnus X1, and a really cool band, cool song. And we can see these uh, signals coming from our own Milky Way galaxy. And you don't have to use, again, a, a lot of expensive equipment. You could do this with an SDR system. You could build your own antenna using foil and cardboard and get something equivalent to this. Um, and I'm not doing any uh, flats of the noise floor. I'm not sampling the cold sky or the ground to get any kind of reference. I'm looking at live data. So I actually get um, accurate quantitative data when you do this kind of a setup on a swept IF system. And let's see, we got the Tech 2782 running. I'm gonna be switching that over soon to a, a zero span mode so we can demodulate that signal and, and, and see how it appears on the oscilloscope. So now I narrowed the span of the spectrum analyzer to a 200 kilohertz span and I moved the antenna to a different portion of the Milky Way galaxy. And we can see a uh, frequency shift that's just slightly lower than center frequency. So we have a group of stars that are relatively close to being at the 1.42 gigahertz and not a lot of Doppler shift in that area. So those stars are relatively, uh, I mean, they're still in motion. Um, and they're um, at a lower frequency, meaning that they're moving away from us slightly. So this is really an interesting thing to see, is we have different portions of our own Milky Way galaxy with, with stars moving towards us and then moving away from us in groups, and we can actually measure that on the spectrum analyzer. So now I'm shifting over uh, to the data that we've acquired on the Tektronix 2782. Now I've set this spectrum analyzer to zero span and set uh, so that we're just going to look at the IF signal coming out of that uh, spectrum analyzer, which will be the analog signal after it's been demodulated. And I have that going into the oscilloscope, um, where we're just seeing the active, uh, what appears to be just noise coming from the demodulated signal of the 1.42 gigahertz frequency of our own Milky Way galaxy. And then we can also listen to this noise. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, convert that to uh, an audio signal so we can actually hear it. I think it's just gonna be noise, but it is noise that is coming from our own Milky Way galaxy up, up to 100,000 light years distance. We are listening to the sound that is transmitted by our own Milky Way galaxy of the 1.42 gigahertz. And this is the demodulated signal, so the analog of that signal. And I have the spectrum analyzer tuned in zero span to get the um, center frequency. And since we found a portion of the Milky Way galaxy that is very close to 1.42, we're able to uh, listen to that. So it does sound like just like noise, but it is interesting because this is actually what it sounds like. And uh, so we're listening to our galaxy. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this video I presented of looking at the Milky Way galaxy through radio astronomy. And particularly, we're looking at the 1.42 gigahertz frequency emission from our Milky Way galaxy. And uh, this is, was a fun experiment to do and, and actually measure the Doppler shift so we can actually see the frequency shift of our Milky Way galaxy based on stars moving towards us and away from us. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thank you for watching.